It was particularly made as a work for hire business 26 years ago, um, where we'd work in other people's brands, other people's IP, um, and mainly in kids' games. Yeah, it's true that we were not uh, known to the players' community. We were mostly a B2B business. You know, we don't want to be uh, on stage saying, hey, here's the next big game, this is from us. That's really the spotlight for our original IP with Dead by Daylight and Death Garden. It was always our passion to create our own game. For us, we're really just happy to make our fans happy. The community will get to know us by playing our game, basically. Mega 2 started in 1992. I've started a business called MMI in 1994. When we've merged, it was the start of building a first original product for console called Jersey Devil. Jersey Devil was really our first game. And so Infogram approached us to do a Looney Tunes project based on Bugs Bunny. And that's how we've started to create games for others. So we've made several games starting from that point based on known IP but always while doing work for hire for others. So behavior is a really interesting, I'd say it was an interesting experiment in that it was particularly made as a work for hire business 26 years ago. And over my 10 years here, I've watched it transform over that time where we've taken on bigger brands and we've learned how to create our own IP. Uh, to us, it was important that uh, uh, to create uh, some original IP and uh, we've tried many times before, not very successful, but this one, I think we've learned a lot from Wet and Naughty Bear, and uh, the technology that uh, is, exists today was way better to create those types of games. So we, that's how we've, we've came up with uh, Dead by Daylight. Uh, we have a long heritage. It's been a while, uh, almost a decade, that we wanted to create this game. Uh, we're passionate about horror, and we also were very curious about the asymmetry and uh, the multiplayer uh, aspect uh, of games. There, in the horror genre, the asymmetry multiplayer uh, doesn't really exist. It's something that we really wanted to explore. So this is how it started. Uh, actually, um, we started doing some prototypes about six years ago, and uh, we found that idea really quickly where this overpowered killer against the force of armor was really, really fun and engaging. Our team is doing a playtest, so that's what we're gonna do now. We're uh, checking the state of the game and see what's been added and changed. I'll go straight to the building, so that way I... Somebody gonna save me or trying to escape. I think I'm gonna try to escape. Thanks to the animator, they're doing a great job. Uh, there's something that we call the race to arms, where um, to make the game fun, we need to give enough power to the killer so that they feel powerful. But the more power we give them, it becomes unfair to the survivor. So we give a little bit more to the survivor, but then it unbalances again. So that race to arms is what was the most difficult. Like find this sweet spot where it's fun for everybody and it feels fair for everyone. Sometimes we get inspired by a specific killer or something cultural, um, a story, a legend, urban legend, and we build the power around that. But most of the time, it's, it's the opposite. We look at gameplay that is missing from the game and what we could do in a specific aspect of the game, and then we create a killer that fits this theme. We want to add something that's completely new. It's like a new boss fight, something that will change uh, the gameplay for the killer, but also our survivor needs to react to this new killer. Usually when we, uh, we start a new character environment, a chapter, we meet and from there we share some idea and what would be cool, what would be nice. When I have enough info and we agree on what we want, the direction, and then I meet with the concept artist and we, we start exploring like, uh, some ideas of character. You have a lot of uh, characters with its unique abilities, a lot of different builds, and a lot of different maps. The game is also uh, very unique in the sense that it's a two-in-one game. Whether you play a survivor or a killer, you get to experience two very different games. So it was very hard to predict uh, how much it would resonate with our players. Honestly, we didn't know how successful the game would be, and when we saw how many players 
uh, we're enjoying the game when we launched. It was like a dream comes true uh, to us. So we are very happy about that. Just to tell you a, a little story, the first forecast we got for uh, Dead by Daylight, we were looking at 300 to 400,000 users and we're now uh, higher than 5 million. So he could be a skin for the Huntress, or he could be a skin... He could very well do a skin for the Trapper too, because he does set traps. When we release a new killer, we now are more confident that it's okay to give people a week or two to learn these new things and to, to take the time to learn how to play against and to play that killer before we react and change the killer completely. I will say that we were a bit naive when we first designed the game. So we made, uh, we made Dead by Daylight thinking it's, at its core, a hide and seek game. But when we released the game, we soon realized that the community would prefer and play the game more boldly. So they would, the chase would be way more important. So one of the big things that changed uh, during development is to um, getting these mechanics around the chase more polished and more fun and adding more components to this part of the game rather than to the hide and seek. Well, it's true that we were not uh, known to the players community. We're well known within the publishers community. So we were mostly a B2B business. Even when we did original title, they, they were always published by a publisher. And so we're very passionate about this. We think that the community gives us a, a lot of good feedback on the game. Uh, and so to make it better and better. We need a community manager. And for that, we wanted someone who had an expertise in that who would understand the worries and the concerns of the, the streamers and the broadcasters in a way that most of us don't. So we decided to go and find someone who had experience in that more than experience in game development. Before I was hired at Behavior, I was a graphic designer. I was a fan of Dead by Daylight before I got hired and I was lucky enough that I met the dev team at PAX 2017. And one month later, I get the, the director, uh, Matt Cote. Uh, he just typed something in my chat while I was streaming and he's like, hey, um, I want to talk to you. So I got invited to the studio and I got offered the community management job, which I've always compared this to, let's say you play basketball in your backyard and then this NBA guy is like, you know you, come play for the big leagues. <laughs> so that's kind of how I tell my story. It was kind of a dream of when I was a kid, but now I had the chance by meeting these guys and having this story behind me. We were already looking at a lot of the streamers and Gabrielle was streaming Dead by Daylight a lot. She was also showing a lot of resolve and endurance because it's really tough to, to be in front of a crowd day in and day out and to take whatever they give you and turn it into energy, into positive things. So I just talked to Francois about the Billy Billy streaming and uh, we had a really bad uh, lag issue. So we're talking to our uh, our provider that allows us to stream on different platform to see if they can fix that issue for us. I normally go to general discussion and see what people are talking about since yesterday. We also have local community managers that are doing the same thing for the, their local community. Um, so I'm in contact with them here. So I talk to them on Discord. Uh, we chat also every day to make sure that we are always in contact. I think it started from the fact that we didn't have a marketing department, we didn't have a PR department, we just, it was just us talking to the community. This was the first time that we were doing our own game and that we were presenting it to people and it was important for us to get the feedback to show people in the tone and in the way we communicated that we are also passionate gamers. We understand their concerns, we understand what they want and as it progressed, it's true that things changed a little bit, but also we realized at some point that this game is not just ours anymore. Pepe, 
depending on the class you choose. There's like various class. You can look at it. Okay. But if I have to train on the second one, that's not the class. Yeah. Go to the second one. And I can do So while we were uh, uh, Dead by Daylight was uh, growing, we thought that uh, we could improve uh, some of the game and element and some of the feature within Dead by Daylight by creating another experience. So that's that's a passion of ours to create the Death Garden. Death Garden was created as part of our exploration on how to continue to look at what asymmetrical games would mean. Now one of the questions we came up with during that was what would happen if one of the people had a gun? and what if the other people didn't. So that was the basic starting point to the game. And then we progressed from that into having a moving hunter and then the moving runners. And then we started combining these ideas to create a bigger prototype about how this would work in an arena-based setting. And that led inevitably to what we now know as Death Garden. Hey everybody, welcome to our live stream. You probably know us all by now, but I'm Katie, your senior community manager. I'm here with... Ash uh, Powell, I'm the creative director. I mean, the live stream and the communication with our fans is really important to us. It's really important that we get to tell them what we're doing. It's really important that they get to see us. As transparent as we possibly can with our community is really important to us. And we'll continue to do this up until the point where we launch. And then we hope we have a position, we have a game that's more appealing to everyone. So we're listening, we're hearing what people say, we're playing with them. Uh, we're, we're watching them play as well, and we're beginning to understand and get a better idea of which parts of our asymmetry we want to tweak to create a game that's more appealing for everyone in the world. If you've been watching our Twitch streams for, for Dead by Daylight over the many years that we've launched this game, the, you know, uh, the players have been exposed to probably half the entire team uh, in various different capacities, talking about their work, showing the audience their work so they can be critiqued. And sometimes we convince the audience that we're on the right path. And you know, by communicating to them, uh, instead of imposing this, we're, we're trying to sell the path we're, we're, we're taking to the audience. So by, the, the more I think you explain where you're going, the, I think it, the better the, the reaction of the, of, uh, of, of the audience, of the community is going to be. There's a true human connection then as well, right? It's a very two-way conversation. now walk by the studio itself. It's an open space environment and it's divided by projects. We have uh, four divisions at Behavior, so we have a lot of uh, different uh, type of uh, domains where they can excel and they put a lot of effort into the video games that we create. Yeah, I have a super long, like I said, I've been in the industry for 20 years, but I've been making games since I was a little kid. Though I play every video game on the planet, it started out where you know my parents would get me board games. I'd go to the comic book store and I'd buy comic books and I'd actually cut the characters out, I'd tape them to the board, make new rules on the squares of the board, change the dice types, change the rules, write my own cards and have my friends play these games. Uh, and that helped drive me towards uh, getting into video games. And uh, I love it because uh, playing games, video games are my passion, both uh, playing and building them. Given we were an independent developer and still are an independent developer versus being a big publisher, we're very effective in our scheduling and budgeting. So for us, we have to make sure that we have the right people on the right tasks at the right time, and it also helps create a great quality of life. Very family-friendly environment. Lots of people have children here, uh, families, so it's a great place. So uh, this is the kitchen of Cafeteria System. For lunch today, we have super nice uh, boeuf parmentier, which is like a shepherd pie, but it's a French classic, which is a braised beef gratin d'oignon, and uh, sweet potato on top. All the product that we get is from a few kilometers around here, being eco-responsible and uh, buying local. 
it's the best food that I've had as a game developer ever in terms of what you get, the quality of it, the quantity for the price, it's, it's the best. Thank you, sir. It looks delicious as always. It's weird. I get the idea. I get a craving. Then I'll be like, mm, I would eat, uh, for example, uh, pork chops. Then I'll buy some and I'll make them at home. And then if I like it, I'll bring it here. So it's basically what we want to do. And we try to keep it rolling. So we try to roll the menu over so everybody gets their date. We've created a culture that allows people to have a great work-life balance. You know, our expectation is you work hard while you're in the office, but then go home and be with your friends, family, socialize, because that balance is really important. Um, actually, it's kind of nice because I can bring my kids here. So my daughter's, uh, my daughter's here. She knows everybody gets to meet everybody. In fact, the company just sponsored her in a run to beat cancer. So that was really nice. So again, it goes back to the family feel that behavior has uh, and really ties us all together. And sometimes even people go from one, one department to the other, one studio to the other, because of personal uh, aspiration. aspiration. We're, we're one company, but we have different focuses. And that allows our employees to experiment with their careers, experiment with different genres, experiment with different ideas and different things. And that's how we make sure that we have a nice dynamic between the groups. Today is actually very, very good. We're getting a lot of stuff done. I'm working a lot right now on the Halloween event. Here, when I got back to my desk, I had this envelope from Vienna, uh, from some people that we really, really like, that sent me a big uh, pile of these icons, 3D printed. There was a little celebration for the launch, the very successful launch of our last chapter. The, the mood is good. This is an environment that, that Remy's created really from the beginning, and it resonates so well across it. We have an opportunity for all of our employees to talk to all the executive team anytime they want, and the common message is, this is really different from where I used to work. And I think one of the reasons why we can do that is because we're 26 years old, we've learned a lot about how to plan making games. So there's, there's less and less surprises. So we plan it very well. The balance and passion, it's important, uh, even in our uh, relationship with uh, partners and uh, with the audience and with everybody, uh, all, any stakeholders around the behavior. As much as we're balanced internally with our teams and our people, we're also balanced with our stakeholders, with our partners. It's, uh, and we are proud of, our, of having great relationship with a lot of partners. And we, we act the same way also then we act internally. And we're, we remind ourselves sometimes that we need to be like that all the time. And for us, we're really just happy to make our fans happy. Uh, that's the biggest goal. Keep the players entertained, keep the fans happy, um, and continue to give them new stuff and keep them engaged because the day they walk away is the day we, we lose it all. Very, very important to us. Transparent to our players, transparent to the community, and transparent to our partners. We're an open book.